everyone. And hello again from Literacy Volunteers. I'm Miss Jody, and I've been telling you some stories. And today is a very famous story. It's actually a folk tale from Germany, and it was told originally by the Grimm brothers, and it's been retold today by Ilsa Plum. And she has a little different, but it's the same story that we'll all know. And it's called The Musicians of Bremen. Bremen is a little village in Germany. I'm going to tell it with characters, and I'm sure you might recognize this. This is Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, but today he's playing to be just a plain donkey. I'm sure if you've been in a play at school, you play different parts. So today Eeyore is going to pretend to be a donkey. He's a real donkey, but that's it. Then we also need a cat. We're going to have a rooster. And we're going to have a dog. They're all in this story. Okay, The Musicians of Bremen by Ilsa Plum. A very long time ago, there lived an old donkey who had served a miller faithfully for many years. But when the donkey had become too old to carry heavy sacks of grain, his master was tempted to do away with him and save himself the expense of feeding such a useless beast. So here's my donkey. Fearing the worst, the donkey took to the open road while he still had the use of his four legs. As he walked, he decided that since he had such a wonderful bray, a bray is a donkey sound, goes he haw he would go to Bremen Town and join a band of street musicians there. So he left. The donkey had not gone very far when he came upon an old hunting dog lying in the road, panting as if he'd run a long way. Dog. Hey, old four paws, what's the matter? asked the donkey. Why are you panting so hard? Oh, gasped the dog. What is to become of me? Now that I am old and stiff and can't hunt anymore, my master plans to shoot me. Oh. I have run away, but now I will surely starve since I have nowhere to go. Why not join me, asked the donkey. I am bound for Bremen Town to be a musician there. I will bray and you can bark and together we'll make wonderful music. The dog was glad to go, so the two joined forces and went on down the road. Before long, they came upon a cat shivering by the roadside. Cat. She looked as sad as a rainy day and her elegant whiskers drooped almost to the ground. Hey, old whisker face, said the donkey. What's the matter with you? Nothing could be as bad as all that. Little do you know, moaned the cat. I'm getting too old and weak to chase mice. Now that my eyes are failing and my teeth are no longer sharp, my mistress plans to drown me. I have run this far, but where can I go? Come with us, said the donkey. We are off to Bremen Town to be musicians. Your singing would be most welcome, but we know a cat goes meow meow a lot. So the cat joined them and the three, old, three traveled on together. Soon the friends came to a farmyard, and there on the gatepost was a ragged old rooster. Oh, drop my rooster. Rooster. He was crowing so loudly that they stopped in their tracks and looked at him in amazement. Hey, Redcomb, stop your screeching, said the donkey. Why are you making such a racket? This is my last chance to crow, so I'm making all the noise I can said the rooster. Now that I am not young as I used to be, my mistress has decided to make me into chicken soup. Listen, said the donkey, come with us to Dramer Town, and we can all be musicians there. You can have a fine lusty crow and no one would hear it in a kettle of soup. So the rooster gladly went along with the four runaways and they went on their way. The friends walked on and walked on, but Bremen Town was still very far away and it was impossible to reach in just one day. Toward nightfall, the travelers stopped in the middle of a great dark forest and decided to spend the night there. Tired from the journey, the donkey and the dog lay down under a large tree. 
the cat settled himself on the low branch, and the per and the rooster perched. Where's my rooster? There he is. And my rooster perched on top near the top to get a better view. From there he could see for miles, and as he looked around, he suddenly saw a bright light glittering through the trees. Eagerly, the rooster called down to his companions, I see a light. There must be a house nearby. Then let's go there at once, said the donkey. This is not such a comfortable place to spend the night. All the animals agreed. The dog had hopes of finding a few bones. The cat longed for a saucer of milk. At last, they found themselves in front of the house, and the donkey crept up to the window to look inside. Inside, he saw a table heaped with good things to eat and a band of robbers enjoying the feast. Hey, long ears, what do you see? The rooster asked. The donkey explained, and the four friends quickly thought of a way to get rid of the robbers. The donkey stood with his front paws. The dog jumped on top. Here, we've got to get these here. Dog jumped on top. The cat climbed on the top of the dog, and the rooster perched on the cat. The four, four musicians joined in their good luck in frightening the robbers away. They made themselves right at home. Wait, wait, I skipped a page. This is very important, because this is what happened. As the donkey signaled, they all made their music as loud as they could. The donkey brayed, hee-haw. The dog barked, woof, woof. The cat meow meow, and the rooster crowed. In the midst of this glorious uproar, all four went plunging through the window into the robber's den. The robbers jumped up in fright, thinking that a pack of demons had attacked them, and ran screaming from the, into the forest, and ran for their lives. The four musicians rejoiced in their good luck in frightening away the robbers. They made themselves right at home, and feasted as though they had not eaten in months. Now, that's the way the story ended when I first heard it. They just scared away the robbers. This one goes on with a little bit farther. When they had finished their meal, they blew out the lantern, found a place for the night, and each according to his own idea of comfort. The donkey went outdoors and lay down on some straw. The dog stretched himself out behind the door, and the cat curled up by the hearth, and the rooster flew up in the roof, exhausted from their venture, and they quickly fell asleep. Now, as I say, that's where it used to end. And then the farm, the, all the people in the farm around there came and thanked the animals for scaring away the robbers, and they were all took them home and kept them happily ever after. But this author, Ilsa Plume, ends it a little different way, and it's a wonderful ending. After midnight had passed, the robbers came out of their hiding place. When they saw the house all dark and quiet, they thought that they'd been scared away too easily. The robber chief ordered one of the men to go back in and look inside. Curiously, the man crept back through the night and went in to light a candle at the hearth. There he saw the cat's eyes glowing in the dark. Have you ever seen a cat in the light where their eyes really glow? And thought they were smoldering embers. But when he tried to light a match by them, the cat flew at him. In a fury, scratched him as hard as he could. Before the robber could even reach the door, the dog jumped up and bit him on the leg. He ran across the yard. The donkey gave him a sharp kick. Hearing all the commotion, the rooster gave forth a piercing shriek, cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo. The frightened robber did not stop running until he had reached the robber chief. Puffing and panting, he gasped. In the house sits a fiendish witch who snarled and scratched my face. By the door waits a bandit who stabbed me in the leg with a knife. In the barnyard lurks a hairy monster who attacked me with a club. But worst of all, from the roof crouched the old judge selling cats a cook, cats a cook. As our brave musicians, they didn't go to Bremontown after all. They decided it would be a shame to leave such a comfortable house, and no doubt they are still there making wonderful music under the stars. So that's my story, and we have a little figurine that I want to show you, and that is what it looks like when you look at and see the musicians standing on top of each other. And when you enjoy our story, please give it a thumbs up like, share it with friends, and subscribe to the Literacy Volunteers. Thank you.